Hello, ladies and gents, Boobrew here. More modern videos for you folks. My apologies for out of focus recording. Um, did what I could for a random location for this kind of tape. So, um, yeah, this is uh, uh, one of our boot camp testing sessions with um, people from a country from my city or uh, with the teammates and uh, this time around we're gonna bring you uh, black white Eldrazi Texas versus Eldrazi Tron so two quite different Eldrazi decks battling it out in this confrontation be uh, between each other basically the black white deck is much more down to earth so it's very reminiscent of the of its green white hate rate counterparts in modern and very close to what similar tech tries to accomplish in legacy as well so you would see similar cuts and similar traits while well, old Rosetron is basically a stock deck um, and this is a stock list of it so no big surprises here I would say from the deck on the right side of your screen. Yeah. And uh, we're shuffling up, getting ready in here. Uh, what can I say? Well, one of the few interesting things about um, my Elder Zetron here is that it has main deck chalice and main, uh, a couple of main deck ratchet bombs and corns. Um, and then the sideboard features uh, a few texts, um, but you would see them later on once we move on to sideboard games after a couple main deck ones. It's basically all about mana and drumming. Whoever gets to, you know, either slow down the mana of each other or just the pressure. So yeah, my task is to slow down his clock. So I started off with a Trump piece and he started off with a Blackwood Fastland into Averwile. Yeah, um, don't get surprised um, by me like playing things uh, upside down, but they're located in the right order. Uh, it doesn't affect me, it's kind of funny overall. Um, basically better for my opponent so I had a second drum piece and the wretched bomb so he after he optic the vial he laid down a tight hollow skiller so to try to you know slow down my draws take something away so he looks at a couple of Mulans including a third piece of the Tron uh, looks at the con ballista and uh, I think that might be a dismember. I'm not sure. So he took con here because, well, uh, otherwise it would just come down next turn. Should be pretty sick. See, so here you see me having um, a main deck ratchet bomb in play. Pretty good. Um, on this board I would say so yeah I decide to crack the bomb now for the while because otherwise he would well I could crack it in response to the upticking but that it, it's a small difference up next um, there was a Ballista for free and just a dismember that took care of the color, so I still have a corn in there. Here's the art butter and the ghost quarter. So can search. Yeah. Uh, but uh, be before taking my turn, I do what I'm supposed to, sort of, because without the drone, um, I might as well. Uh, kill the ar uh, arbiter before a ghost quarter. I mean, with the ghost quarter on the stack, so I get to actually search a waste. 
so that I still maintain the number of lands in play, even though I now don't get the luxury of um, excess mana. So Karn is not coming down this turn, so that's a thing. He pretty much had to do this, I think. To cut me off Karn. Uh, so, yeah. Didn't have better plays, so Aptic Ballista attack for two. Now I can get rid of another color, for example. Although, if, that, if it comes down to that, then I probably shouldn't cash it in right away, unless uh, I would have like, a good, better place. So here's the Displacer. Uh, without remembering my hand, what I can do here is just charge a Ballista and attack. Uh, but it looks like I drew another Dismember to get rid of uh, Displacer. I fall down to 12, which is kind of kind of low, but um, I have a clock on board, that's also doubles as removal. Uh, this placer is also kind of um, annoying because with its ability it just uh, kills off the ballista uh, without value. Well, kind of similar thing with Flicker Wisp, with ballista, though with ballista on 3 what I can do is I can shoot uh, two to face and then the last third counter goes to flicker wisp in response to the flicker ability. So yeah still uh, containing the board on the other side. Okay now I get back to Tron mana because of the map. So my rips this game were just fantastic. So the card which was in my hand from the start now finally comes down to the table. And uh, yeah, uh, going for his cards is just not a great idea. Might as well cut him off black. Cut him off an extra land. He scoops it up because, well, he just cannot keep up here. As simple as that. As simple as that. Because um, if he didn't have anything to break up the throne, uh, I'd still have a lot of mana. I'd just uh, plus Karn or just uh, cash it in if he presents something annoying on board. Mm, if he didn't draw another land, then also uh, he wouldn't actually present anything meaningful on board. Yeah, he, at this point he would just be like too far behind. Also, um, this black white deck doesn't really have that many ways to interact with the resolved card uh, outside of uh, combat, so that's also a huge thing. So yeah, re resolved card with an empty board is just almost a not to lose. Um, unless he has Vial with free counters on it to flash in like a, I don't know, like a free attack, um, free attack creature. Couple interesting choices out of the Black White Ultras build uh, would be a couple copies of Wall of Moments. Um, because it synergizes with the Displacer and Flicker Wisp and also helps um, against some aggro decks. Yeah, and then a couple of uh, their confidence as well, main deck. Just to not run out of gas too easily. The deck doesn't really want to play all four because, well, there's Cave of Coilus, okay, there are no um, Thoughtseize or something like that, but it, it's still kind of like tricky. 
channel for uh, their confidence, but in some metagames that actually might be a very good tech. So more than yeah, basically, so wide as a format, so the, it could vary in terms of the field composition from very hor horrible for any dark confidence in any deck to uh, okay-ish to straight out uh, positive for for main deck copies. Tutron piece. He didn't have a one drop. I mean, he didn't have vile on turn one. He had it now on turn three, basically. So just to swamp, uh, so swamp lands, uh, planes and elders temple. Here's the tight hollow color. A bunch of lands, smasher, all is dust and ballista. I think I again have a natural tron. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think yeah, that's again a natural tron. It's pretty sweet, I must say. Um, not like absurd draws, but pretty good for this matchup, of course. Um, unlike stuff like Fortnite here, uh, Tetralos Color is not an old draw, it doesn't have the void, and it's actually, uh, it actually has a color. I do have a Ballista here. Um, still, but I decide to rather, um, get this Endbringer out to play a sap uh, because among other things uh, it just jump starts my clock and uh, you know once I actually get to um, untap with it I can just use the Ballista and the Endbringer to take out the um, Scholar well he kills off my Ballista uh, with the strangler, so we're just like getting a little bit confused what goes where. We figure it out in the end. So this mesh underneath this color actually uh, gets back to graveyard. Uh, now here is the ghost quarter to break up the tron, but the damage is kind of done with the um, and bringer in play. Should be feeling pretty comfortable. Unless he gets something like a path to exile, that would be annoying. Other than that, we have just reasonable amount of mana. It will do wonders. Basically, it contains the board here. So there is this color uh, at the end of my draw step. So after I draw, he gets to see what's up. Uh, don't have the Tron again. There's a, another waste uh, mine, Fortnite series, and uh, Ballista and all this dust. So, yeah. But um, I can just play my fourth land, uh, put Ballista, um, which he should have taken here instead of the Fortnite here. Uh, he probably just, you know didn't think this through well, so now I still have a Ballista around, uh, get back my footnotes here, back to hand, so I just pinged off uh, this, this color with a card on, underneath with the Endbringer, which untaps uh, on his turn, so now basically if I think that I would want to tap out next turn, I can just cash in this Ballista plus uh, Endbringer to kill off like a Strangler or something, and uh, yeah, he will still have the looming threats of the Aulus Dust. My next up deck is another Ballista, which is just really good in this matchup. Although he does have a, quite a few ways to get rid of it, but if it, it's not answered, it's just pretty sick. Or if I cast it with enough counters and or like have extra support for it, like Endbringer, for example. So yeah, our couple main deck games. Yeah, because these were so fast and kind of a bit anticlimactic. Um, it's hard to really have a solid impression. But the matchup I 
well, I think it's slightly favorable like for the Tron. Um, I haven't played it all that much to have uh, a lot of opinions. So that Ugin is actually like a free dollars dust, which I'm gonna get soon. But for playtesting, that's that's what I said. Um, new addition, couple of hanger backs. I just love them in fair matchups. Uh, just good value. Of course, um, well, he can flicker them with Displacer Flicker Wisp, but I still really like them. If he just does not answer them quickly, then it's probably gonna be huge trouble for him. Bring in the third Wretched Bomb, does a lot of stuff in this matchup. Um, Basilisk Color, just you know, for extra life gain because I'm essentially playing against an aggro deck, while well, I'm more of like mid range. So bring in second better skull for similar reasons, like the color. So he's gonna bring in the first now at least one Stony Silence, if not two. Uh, well, I'm gonna talk him out of like bringing in both. Uh, but I think after one post cyber games, we'll figure out that Stony is pretty good actually. Ballista, to an extent, hanger bag, uh, all the equipments, bombs, maps. So yeah, Stony actually does decent work in this matchup. But uh, the problem is, of course, like all this dust, uh, and because of cards like that, I think bring um, boarding into. Um, Third, all this dust is actually a very good idea. All of is, I, I think, uh, an exciting for this matchup. And then he brings one uh, blaster lance, just as a removal, basically. Slash life gain to um, not die to my fast beat downs if they happen. Later on, he actually takes out, uh, I think, two more, uh, two more uh, Aver vials because. They're shot by his own stony silence, so that's the thing. Uh, and he just puts Wall of Omens back in. But this is what we thought would be okay in the dark. Um, because I'm bringing like, a lot of good uh, mid range cards, so I'm thinking of taking out Reshaper, it's normally the weakest creature. Uh, but um, again, after some post cyber games, I think. He, uh, it's incorrect to side them all out. It's definitely correct to side out all uh, Chalice of the Void. Then if you have uh, two Mind Stones, Main Deck instead of the Ratchet Bombs that I have here. Um, maybe you should just side out something else, but also you might not be uh, not have the Hanger back, so you might not need to side in that many cards actually. Um, but yeah, I, I like Mindstone in this matchup. One way to not lose this game, for example, uh, just uh, by having enough mana all the time. They also cash in themselves, so it's not just RAM. You convert it into another card uh, when you have enough lands in play, or Tron assembled. On the other hand, it's a bit awkward with Ratchet Bombs, so yeah. Maybe keep one in because, well, you can always just, you know, cash it in before you uh, crack a Ratchet on two, things like that. Um, the reasoning behind maybe not taking out all, all reshapers is uh, it trades with. All of his stuff, most of the time, uh, and um, what else? Um, it's just like card adventures, like two for one. So it's like sort of like having kitchen things around, and then actually post sideboard you have a lot of uh, good flips from the reshaper, uh, which you don't have to directly put into play. It's a may ability. You can just decide to draw it if you don't want to. You know. Um, drop another ratchet into play from the reshaper if you have already one ticked up at in, in ticked up tattoo so 
is a flexible card after all. Yeah, kind of like this matchup, but uh, it's not like insanely good. So, if you get some Leonine Ar Arbiter going with some, with not just one but back to back ghost quarters, you're you're in big trouble. Basically, any deck. It's not just about being cut off the uh, Tron meta, but just being cut of lands that matters. Okay, here's a turn one while. Here's an horse's mine. So let's see what he had here. See what that is. Okay, that's uh, the arbiter. Guess he had no other good two drops here. Okay, here's a temple, which would have been useful if uh, I didn't side out all displacers. I get a wretched bomb here, which is good, but things could get awkward. Things definitely can get awkward. Hit X first with the Arbiter. And here is Displacer. And Vile is at 2 by now. So he can Vile in like a... a scholar. Crack a bomb here on 1. No surprises, so nothing crazy coming into play. Uh, replace the Rashid Bomb with another one. Um, at, he attacked with Displacer Arbiter, fell down to 13. So he had Shambling Vent and then Stony Silence. Uh, which is kind of funny, so yeah. That once I Crack this bomb on one, on one he has the stony silence. But the point is that if I didn't crack that one, uh, it would be a two. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to crack it. Because, well... He would have the stony silence. So I would be able to put a country in response, but not actually like crack the ratchet. And here's a Fodnuts here. I just have a hanger on one. Another hanger, dust, car, and, and bringer smasher. They have two lands in the temple, so any land switches on smasher. Which I think he took away here. I block this placer and get a 1 1. He doesn't even have to do all that much here because you know he can just always tap down something annoying with the displacer from my side. I mean, something annoying from my side, yeah. Okay, here's just passing off the turn because well I didn't hit didn't hit the land, which is pretty annoying. Uh, what happens here? I guess I just show what I had in hand in frustration. I jump with the token here on the footnot, take five in from the attacks. So now what happens is that he displaces Fodnot, 
um, after my draw step, I think. So first I draw a card, and then he gets to take out something. I advocate for taking out Hanger back. But actually, that doesn't matter all that much, because, well, he can always just tap it. Uh, but the point is that nothing actually matters too much here. Uh, if I have a blocker, he just taps it and attacks for lethal. So it doesn't. So no, nothing in that in that hand was actually uh, frustrating. Map would have been too slow, uh, and, and besides, I wouldn't be able to use it because of Stony in play. So we're arguing here about the surgical. since this way he can extract out the Tron Um, yeah, I think he just took out the two more vials, so keeping one in and uh, returning back to Gold Womans. Actually, I think he's supposed to take out all the vials and then put in the, um, the surgical. So that's, I think, the general sideboarding for this matchup from the Texas uh, build. There's a chance that um, I shouldn't have boarded in the hanger bags because unlike ballistas which can be cashed in immediately and are not too afraid of the blinks um, because uh, so maybe hanger bag doesn't do a, a whole lot but with a lot of mana it's a good mana sink decent blocker against an aggro deck So yeah, why not? Why the heck not? Why the heck not? So yeah guys, there be also some standard tapes in the near days, uh, but those would be not as competitive as, uh, in nature as I would like them to be. I mean, the decks featured will not be as um, as great. My local meta doesn't really have zombies or Marvel in it. It does have some more the vehicles in it obviously but um, the active community is pretty small and uh, not everybody is uh, digging standard just a temple from human turn one uh, meanwhile I just laid out a couple of Tron pieces Okay, here's a fast land. So maybe he'll have some to drop here. Okay, here's a dark confidence. That's pretty good. Okay, but it died to dismember. I just didn't want to let him, you know, draw extra cards. That's one way to lose this game. Just get him too many resources. Too too much resource. Oh. What else? Not drawing free mana, which is not enough apparently to cast stuff from my hand. Here's an Arbiter. But no third land, nothing like a Ghost Quarter. Here's a Temple and a Smasher. 
So that room rooms in. He's taking it, obviously. He needs to find ghost quarter here. Okay, here's another temple, it seems. So yeah, some builds actually uh, of Black White Texas actually play uh, some smashers of their own in the sideboard, uh, and I think it's uh, it's a decent strategy. Okay, um, Smasher gets goes down via a path, uh, and he pitched the Stony Silence to the trigger, but I can't fetch a land of that path though. Didn't have any money untapped. So yeah, let's see. Basically, just lands are good. But of course, this deck barely wants to ever like flat out, unless uh, there is a map somewhere there that gets uh, gets Seagate wreckage, and then uh, you just keep the pressure going. Here's a ghost quarter, but I guess nothing to uh, do with that mana just yet. Um, basically, I can try to force him like to tap out, and uh, uh, by using this ghost quarter to um, take out his courtyard, he could pay two to you know fetch up something but that basically takes away his turn yeah I think now I uh, remember why I did this here because I actually was really flooding out um, I had a lot of lands uh, I think I pulled out this course quarter now because I didn't want to use up an all his dust chest on the arbiter so that's the that was the tricky part I think my head was high on I think I had like three copies of Wallace Dust in my hand at that point. And I had a second temple, but I just didn't want to go one for one while uh, I still had uh, some life points to work with. Here's another Tron piece because I didn't want to expose uh, to him the fact that I have another temple in hand. Uh, here's a map uh, that normally would be good because I would ever have like Tron Nano or uh, get a wreckage to draw and stuff. Okay, here I tap 4 because uh, map wants 2 mana and then 2 more to actually be able to search with Arbiter in play. I'm down to 10 already, which is not amazing. It was pretty uh, fortunate for him that he had that path to deal with the Smasher, that's for sure. And after that, I flooded out, had a bit of a two reactive hand. If I had some pressure here, I think I would have been in much better shape. But nope. Okay, I got the third Tron piece. So I'm gonna get a lot of mana, but um, I wouldn't have good, um, you know, ways to actually use it. I think he kind of sensed it, so that's why he didn't really play anything. So yeah, like once I play some, uh, once I commit some threat to the board, then maybe he would uh, have to, you know, play something out. Okay, here's an all dust just to um, get rid of the arbiter. In response to that, he paths it and pays two extra to be able to search. So you know he gets the black mana. Okay, I guess he was just color screwed there. Uh, that's why actually he didn't really do all that much. Okay, and here's his color. So when I was dust is out, here are two more in my hand and another temple. Very unexciting hand. So he uh, yeah takes one of the dust of course, but. Um, it's kind of tricky. Um, I'm kind of fearing another scholar. I'm almost at 10, so that's kind of like psychological a little bit. 
So I'm still left off with uh, like one um, dust in hand. And uh, yeah, with that much mana and that kind of board state, if I just had the actual Ugin there, I would have easily won this game, I think. But there's a reason why you actually don't run Ugin in the deck. It's because when you have the natural Tron, you can't actually cast Ugin on turn 3. And, um, well, Karn in most situations is actually better. This is one of the rare ones when Ugin is, would have been actually game winning. Yeah, here's a pretty annoying uh, scholar that takes away the third Alice dust, and here's a Dark Confidence, so yeah. I needed to draw something like a Ballista here to try to, you know, stay alive. And uh, yeah, that's what I drew. Um, I tap out, blow up the world, get my Alice dust back still have likely still have ballista um so yeah i wanted to draw ballista i got it it's probably some psychology i should be using at the gp just to like program the deck even though it's not really about programming but um i don't know somehow it works Still have a ballista in play with some counters on it. Four, to be exact. Still have all this dust. But the game is not exactly lost for him, but it's... Uh, it's awkward. Well, here is a color. Here's the mana to equip. Here's a Blessed Alliance, which is annoying. But I get to do some damage and gain some life. So I kind of like gonna buy myself a little bit of time. Uh, plus, I still have that All is Dust and Fury. So, one activation, make one charge up, then I can do at least one more. Yeah. Actually, that's six, so I could have gone two more charge ups. I think I miscounted the mana here. So it wasn't four, right? One, two, yeah. So three more charge up. So it goes up to seven. Then, um, basically deals seven to him and gain six. Because, uh, you know, in order to gain life I'd still have to have a ballista like equipped so that's why I just um, first take off uh, six and then the last one here's a displacer that's annoying because then that means he'll be able to set my blocker I take off the strangler of his hand I attach, attach the color but the point is that he can uh, displace my guy even at, at my end step. Um, so he'll then draw the card and then I, I'll see what's up. So he'll. Ah, he won't get the Strangler back. We're basically confusing ourselves with the Tate Hollow Scholar. So sorry for all that jazz. Um, so he shouldn't have had uh, Strangler or shouldn't have. Uh, and this uh, Fortnite series actually. Exiled periods, and it's not coming back. So yeah, because uh, late night, getting tired, stuff like that, uh, that's affecting the game and the mindset a, li uh, a little bit too much. Yeah, he gets his own footnotes here, which is kind of annoying.
Yeah, I'm just getting flooded here. Would be really happy to get a map or another X. X costed creature. Okay, he's not gonna actually get this footnotes here back, and uh, this strangler shouldn't be there. What actually should happen is that I'll see that footnotes here plus another card and choose like one of those. So we get corrected by a friend here. It's like this is just getting too messed up. Okay. So footnotes here get blinked. Um, see, so yeah, I get rid of another footnotes here in his hand. Now I'm actually not sure if he had to, you know, blink it all that much, but it doesn't matter if he lose some resources as long as he actually gets through. Here's a wall of omens with a weird tap. Well, actually with three temples and another lens untapped, yeah, he can activate it two times. So I simply just do not get to gain any life. And here's a land and here's another land. A game that I thought was almost impossible to lose, yet still lost. Because I completely flat out, a hanger back actually wouldn't have helped that much here because he would just blink it and uh, it wouldn't trigger so I wouldn't get any tokens to block with. So yeah, um, just needed a little bit of help from the top decks. Really interesting how he actually got out of this. Um, if that all this would have been an Ugin, yeah, I would have won this game, but what else? Okay, thanks guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, leave any feedback in the comment section below. Check the links in the description underneath. And uh, until the next sale, goodbye folks.